Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our webinar. This is Courtney, the Marketing Coordinator here at AIM. Today's webinar will be recorded and later posted on our website. This does mean that all attendees will be automatically muted so that we can get a quality recording. If you have any questions, go ahead and type them into the chat box, and we'll try to answer them throughout the presentation. But if we're unable to get to all the questions, we'll have a member of our marketing team reach out to you individually to make sure that you get your questions answered. Our newest agent resource, the Two Minute Minute, is in full swing. Our marketing team is bringing you quick ways to talk to more prospects, write more business, and grow your agency. We're posting new videos every Monday and Wednesday, so check out our social media pages, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and YouTube to see what you might have missed. Some episodes even reference exclusive offers, so you're definitely going to want to check those out. Our next webinar will be next Wednesday at 9 a.m., like our normal time. Um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Don so that we can get started today. Go ahead and take it away, Don. Thank you, Courtney. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us today here at AIM. Don Erickson here with AIM. Uh, today, we have special guest, uh, Bridget Collins, One America's Regional Account Director. Uh, she's going to be going over uh, the funding hybrid LTC by repurposing qualified assets. Good morning, Cor or Bridget. How are you doing? I'm doing well, Don. Thank you so much for having me on today. Yeah, it's going to be. Right. I believe Let's this go. is going to be another great webinar. So we're going to jump right in. It looks like so. Yep, absolutely. Let's go ahead and, and jump right in. Good morning, everybody. Bridget Collins here. Um, coming, I always say coming to you live <laughs> from California, <laughs> where I I reside. Um, uh, but yeah, I'm excited to talk to you guys about you know the repurposing of qualified money, and it's really you know repurposing. Um, maybe maybe that's not even the appropriate word. It's it's utilizing qualified funds yeah. in a unique way to to fund um, an asset care solution with us. So hopefully. You know, everybody on this morning has a basic idea of the One America concept, but, you know, just in brief explanation, we have a base policy and we have a writer. And our base policy is generally either a whole life or it's an annuity based with our writer, which is the continuation of benefits writer. I literally have like my left hand and my right hand as I'm explaining that because it's, it can be as simple conceptually to understand it that way. And what we're going to talk about today is the utilization of qualified funds to pay for a, an asset care a whole life with the continuation of benefits writer. I am going to differentiate between sort of the national version, the version that we're offering in every state that we write business in, except for the state of California. And then I will talk about the California version. So for those that sell or are in California like me, um, California is on the older generation product that One America offers in our entire product suite to include our qualified solution. It's even called something entirely different. Although to be frank, I don't like how we call either one of them. <laughs> I wish we just called it qualified money because um, it's really what we're talking about. But I will go through the nuances for the national version as well as the California version. And this is just a great concept to talk about with clients who likely would have been utilizing their qualified accounts as their emergency money anyway. Um, when I first came to One America a little over five years ago, I, I inquired, I thought the solution was great. I really wanted to know who who is this for? Like who's the target audience for this? Um, so I do want to preface this from an age perspective. They do need to be 59 and a half or older to use the qualified solution without being subject to the, the penalty for accessing qualified funds in this way. Um, um, but also, you know, that these are folks that may, I mean, good good problems to have that may have more money in a, in a qualified account than they need to live on. Generally speaking, you know, a lot of folks, you, you know, their qualified funds, retirement accounts, those are the accounts that they're going to utilize for income when they retire. Um, and if they're, if they've done a great job in saving, they likely could have multiple accounts um, and many of which may have more funds in them than they need again, leading into those accounts being their emergency funds. And this is a better way, um, we think, to be able to utilize those to fund a long-term care insurance policy. All that being said, the last thing I'm gonna say before I dive into some of the examples here is this is not a way to get around paying the tax on using qualified money, but it is a way to spread it out. So I'll go through that as we go through the examples, but let me go ahead and dive into what we're talking about here. 
So the qualified solutions, the national version, I talked to you guys about the names, right? Annuity funded whole life is the actual name of the solution. Annuity funded whole life, qualified money. In California, it's asset care three. Yeah, asset care three, it's qualified money. Um, again, to reiterate, it's the single premium annuity funded whole life policy with an accelerated death benefit for qualifying long-term care expenses. It is available at, again, 59 and a half through age 80. Um, they do have to be underwritten, so they are going to be underwritten for the solution, but 59 and a half to 80 is what we can consider. And they're typically funded, yeah, with IRAs, 401ks, 403bs, um, non-qualified annuities outside of California. All right, so this is the national version, what you're looking at here. So our, the annuity funded whole life, I think I even added the qualified money to the slide here. So just I'll keep a hammer away at that. <laughs> it's a joint policy looking at both a male and female age 60. So in this case, we're taking $200,000 from their qualified account. So it could be all of the money from the qualified account or a part of it. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be all or nothing. We can take a partial, and I don't want to call it a distribution. We can take a partial amount out of that account. And how, the, how it works is we take the money out of the qualified account that it lives in today, and we move it into a qualified annuity at One America. So no tax penalty, no ramifications there. We're moving it from one qualified account to another qualified account. On the national version, as soon as it hits One America's door, today we're offering a 25% bonus on that dollar amount. So in this case, it's $50,000. That bonus amount, by the way, is something we've been able to increase um, with the interest rate market, which is great. And we started the product with a 20% bonus. We actually at one point did have to dip down to 15, but as soon as we had the opportunity to bring it back to 20, we did. And to even go higher with that, 25%. I can't say for certain whether or not we'll see that go up uh, to 30% potentially, but that's always out there. It's one of the one things that One America consistently looks at in our portfolios. How do we provide better, bigger benefits? We can reduce premiums. You've seen that from us before. And in this solution, the premium structure is a little bit more unique, but what we can do is we can adjust that bonus to provide a higher dollar amount adding into the total pool. So the bringing over $200,000, we're bonusing them right off the bat 25%, so an additional $50,000. So it creates a face amount of just a little over $267,000. You can kind of see how this breaks down provides a monthly benefit for each one of these folks of over $8,000 a month of long-term care benefits. Those benefits are received tax-free. <clears throat> and how this is funded, this is a packaged deal. And I'm gonna say that in particular on the national version because it's distinctly different than how it works in California. So that $200,000 that we're bringing over that we bonus 25% to get you an additional $50,000 is funding both a base policy, a whole life base, base, base policy, and in, this situ and in this case, a lifetime continuation of benefits writer. So a continuation of benefits writer with lifetime benefits. How we're doing that is over a 10, in, in a 10 pay structure. In the next slide, I'll show you kind of how that works in a really good example, visual example so, so that you can see it. So it's, it's essentially a 10 pay solution so like I said, we're not, we're not obliterating the taxes here. They're going to get taxed. They're going to get it. Your clients are going to get a 1099 every year for 10 years on the distribution that's coming out to fund the asset care solution. Again, I'll show you the visual on the next slide. And then after 10 years, they have a fully funded asset care policy with lifetime benefits. So let me go ahead and move into how this works. Let me build this slide out here so we can see it. I could talk through it as it's building, but let me just get it all out here for us. So again, we're taking that $200,000, we're moving it over. We're adding that 25% bonus, so an additional $250,000, I'm sorry, an additional $50,000 for a total of $250,000. And then we're taking a $25,000 distribution out of that total pool over 10 years to fund a 33-month base policy with a lifetime continuation of benefits writer. So differentiating for those that might not be familiar with the One America Solutions, as I talked about in the beginning, the base policy and the writer, the base policy is where the death benefit lives. So if they never use it for long-term care benefits, they have a death benefit that would be paid back to their estate or to their beneficiaries. 
They only use it a little bit for a long-term care need, but they still have money left in that base policy. Again, whatever's remaining in the death benefit would be paid out to their beneficiary or to their estate. If they exhaust their death benefit for a long-term care need, which is why they've purchased this policy in the first place, the long-term care insurance policy, then they move into the continuation of benefits rider, which we have built as lifetime benefits. So remember, it was a little over $8,000 a month in coverage, tax-free for their long-term care expenses, basically for the rest of their life. It's a nice way to, to, move, to use the qualified funds, likely how they would have otherwise, spread out the taxation because they're going to have pay if they leave it where it is they're going to pay taxes anyway we've spread it out for them over 10 years we've leveraged the money to buy them a little bit to buy them more with the bonus and we've got lifetime benefits it's very simple it's easy and frankly for those of you who are maybe limited or only selling in california when i first joined one america and was learning our solutions california's version really like it took me <laughs> it took me a minute I actually learned the national version first and then worked my way backwards. So that's why I'm showing you this version first, even if you don't sell anywhere other than California, because I think with this concept, it's pretty simple, packaged, one and done. We then can talk about sort of how we arrived at this, right? Because this was, this solution that I just showed you is an evolution of what we had before based specifically on both consumer and producer feedback. So this streamlined 10 years, bonus dollars, this was based on feedback from those of you that are, were selling it and from your customers that were buying it. Hopefully we'll get this in California soon, but the California version is, is just as good. It just works a little bit differently. So Don, I'm gonna stop here from a national standpoint. Were there any questions typed in on this? Um, anything that anybody wanted to know? Uh, there was one really, kind of question that was about uh so if you're funding this for the 10 years you know or you put it in there and it takes the 10 years for it to be taxed uh, you know free what if they go on claim like year five does it is there anything that goes you know with that tax money or anything or does it keep working the same you know if you start drawing yep, benefits <laughs> saying you need claim yep it keeps working the same it keeps working the okay. same so you know even if you haven't fully funded the asset care solution, so you haven't gone 10 years, but you need to, you need to go on claim. The policy, the policy works almost as if it were fully funded. So you're good, to, you're good to go. What would happen is if they, if they died, for example, and it hasn't been fully funded, then you still have sort of a policy, you know, sort of a, a half a asset care policy and a half a qualified solution policy. So you would, you would have two different policies there where it sits with the qualified solution on upon death there would be taxes to be paid on that but then you also do have some funded and in, in asset care i want to make sure i said that right the asset care solution the death benefit tax-free the remaining amount that's still in the annuity that wasn't utilized to fund asset care because they died somewhere in the middle of it then that's still in that qualified solution which would be taxed upon just i think being paid out to their estate or to the beneficiary hmm. so that that's how that would work Okay. And then the Good only question. there was another question that says, uh, can you explain the 33 months for the base policy? Sure. So the base policy is how we. I'm going to go. I'm back up to the other slide so I can show you. Is is our is our leveraging factor? It's it's three percent of the of the death benefit. On our qualified solution, it's how we package it. On on asset care, if you're looking at asset care outside of our qualified solution, you do have the option to do a two percent or a 3%, and if you're working with singles, a 4% of the death benefit. So it's just what makes the most sense in, in outside of this solution to leverage the premium the most. So the, the, the greater the percent of the death benefit, the more long-term care benefits you're gonna have. In this case, it would, have in, it would increase the monthly benefit. So from an acceleration standpoint, that's how we're leveraging the premium to create the death benefit amount and that determines how long that base policy would last for so outside of this solution you do have options beyond the three percent you you may have options within this solution but um i never show it that way and i've never seen it 
sold that way. So you can correct me if I'm wrong if we if we do, but generally speaking, when we're looking at a qualified solution, we're doing that three percent acceleration. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's all the questions all I saw right. so far. Okay, perfect. All right. Let me jump into the California version so that we can see how this works. So again, it's asset care three in the state of California. And in, the, in this, this example, the numbers are a little bit different, but we did, we're showing a 61 male and a 60 year old female, and we're taking $100,000. So we're taking the $100,000 and that that 3% acceleration is creating a death benefit of $186,000. So we're leveraging that up by a little more than $86,000 for, for a death benefit. And then this is buying a 5,500 round up, but I want to be clear, I'm rounding up $5,600 a month in long-term care benefits for the insured. Now, the continuation of benefits rider in California cannot be paid for from the qualified fund. So if you remember on that national version, I told you it was a package deal. We took that 200,000 in the prior example and it funded ultimately over 10 years, the base and the rider fully paid for. In California, we can only use the qualified solution to pay, or the qualified funds to pay for the base policy. And in this case, there isn't a bonus, that 25% bonus, but there is a crediting interest rate on the qualified annuity that One America has. So remember, we're taking the money from a qualified solution externally and moving it into a qualified annuity at One America. In California, that qualified annuity has an interest rate earning, I believe it's three and a quarter. I know it's, I know it's over 3%. I'm pretty sure it's about three and a quarter. Maybe, it, it, I, I'm pretty sure, three and a quarter. So it's accruing interest as it's sitting in that qualified annuity at One America. And then it's funding, and I'll talk about the example, it's funding in California, it's over a 20 year period, so almost a 20 pay. Remember, outside of California, it's 10 years. Inside of California, it's 20 years that we're funding and it's the base policy only. So we have to be creative on the continuation of benefits writer if we want to add it. You don't have to add the continuation of benefits writer if you don't want to. Nine times out of 10, that's what we're seeing sold, but you don't, you don't have to if, if that doesn't work for the clients that you're working with. But on the continuation of benefits writer, I've highlighted here for you what the monthly premium would be for this couple with the lifetime benefits. So they'd be paying almost $300 a month to have the continuation of benefits writer paid for, for the policy. So it, and it's it's a 20 year no I, I'm sorry it's $293 a month it's, this is um, paid to 100. So we can be creative on the continuation of benefits writer and how we want to pay it. What I can tell you most of the time from a sales perspective what we see is the producer sets up a SPIA a, a 20 pay SPIA for their client to pay the premium for the writer which matches the 20 pay distribution to fund the base policy so that it then becomes the look and the feel of a sort of a 20 pay solution to have a fully paid up policy here. The premium would be different. This premium, this monthly premium of almost $300 is for a pay to 100 situation, not a 20 pay, but I just wanted to outline to you what, what we're seeing from a creativity standpoint on funding the solution. Um, so lots of ways that we can lots of ways that we can do it, but that's what makes it distinctly different. And it doesn't mean that we sell any less of it in California. We do, but keep in mind that's what we had nationally. And then based upon the feedback, we tightened up some of those things on the national version, which I'm hoping we get in California sometime this year. We have had it pending at the Department of Insurance for about four and a half years now, and um, we've seen some other carriers get product approved that had filed theirs just before we did ours. So we may, this may become moot by the, by year's end, although it is almost August. So I'm not really sure, <laughs> but let me build this out so that you can see the example. I like this hourglass example, because I really think that it kind of iterates what we're trying to describe, which is sort of comes in, funnels down over a certain period of time, and then goes back out to a fully funded policy for you. Let me make sure I built this out all, all together. Oh, let me go here. 
all right, so we took the $100,000 out, we moved it over, we've got the distribution coming out. Remember, this is over a 20-year period. We're using that 33 months on the base policy, and we've built this with lifetime benefits, paying the $293 a month out of pocket in this situation, cash, to fully fund this particular policy. So the biggest difference is it's over 20 years in California, 10 years national. The national version is packaged. It pays for the qualified solution, pays for both the base and the writer. In California, the qualified solution only pays for the base. And then we move forward with, so whether we're talking about inside of California or outside of California, again, reiterating to you, usually we're looking at IRAs, 401ks, 403bs, et cetera. Um, California is that 20 pay distribution. The national version is the 10 pay. Oh, see, it's even better. I knew I had this listed somewhere, but <laughs> um, base policy is three and three quarter guaranteed interest rate and the annuity has a 3% guaranteed interest rate in California. So that's the difference in California from that perspective, as opposed to that 25% bonus that we put on the national version. Um, the 1099s, we talked about that. So those are received in California over those 20 years. That's the 20-year distribution. And of course, the 10 years on the national version uh, everywhere else. And the distributions do count towards RMDs once the owner reaches age 72. So we have certainly had examples where um, they were going to have to take the distributions anyway, and they didn't need them. Gosh, I, I, I really hope I've planned accordingly. I want to be one of those people that has more money and qualified solutions than I need. Um, and then I'm forced to take distributions that I don't need. I really want to be that, but um, we'll see. But again, they do right count towards the you. RMD yeah. once, <laughs> once the owner reaches 72. Um, so this is a nice opportunity to talk up, to be creative in funding an asset care solution. To my knowledge, and I always state it that way because things are always changing. I do try to stay you know, abreast of what's happening in the industry and what other carriers are doing. But I, I, we are the only carrier that offers the ability to take qualified funds to fund a long-term care insurance policy. And I remember back in the day when I represented a traditional carrier, I did get asked quite regularly um, you know, whether or not we could take qualified funds. And of course the answer was always no. So I think we're the only solution out there that can do this. It makes it sim simple from an administrative standpoint to just hand the money to One America and let One America do its thing. There are other ways outside of this that you could be create, you know, that you could be creative in using qualified funds, but you know, that there's more ho hoops to, I think, to draw into. I think, you know, it's setting up different accounts and the mechanisms to pay it and, you know, clients could, you know, um, take a distribution out of their qualified account and pay it themselves and do things like that. But this is very simple, um, you know, administratively done at One America and a, and a good way to talk about, you know, different ways to fund our solution. Um, so I don't know if there was any more questions that came in. Um, it's something sometimes that you can sit and ponder. I think sometimes it helps if you have a client that you're working with in particular, where we really want to see the dollars and cents of what they have, what they potentially could put into a solution, what their ages are, to see what this translates to. But it's a really good opportunity out there to talk about it. The other thing I'll lend to you is that we, as often as we talk about qualified solutions, what ends up happening from a sales perspective, let me talk about that landscape for a minute, is um, the clients get up to the point of, yes, we could do this, but somehow find an, an, an other, another, another funding source. So, um, so, so they have the qualified funds, uh, probably in excess of what they need. They, we've done all of that due diligence. They're ready to go. But then they, well, you know what? Maybe, maybe I want to leave it where it is in the qualified account and I've got this something else sitting over there. So um, certainly our cash funded solutions or 1035 opportunities into our annuity care do account for more of our sales, if you will, than the qualified solutions do, but it, it's certainly a good opportunity to talk about it and, and people are buying this. It's a, it's a nice um, option to have out there. So I, Donna, I'm yeah, not sure if any other option. questions yeah. came in. Yeah. No, um, actually, let's see here. Looks like there was another question that just came in. Uh, is the death benefit joint uh, single life 
or second to die. I know it's the second to die. What is the impact of benefits um, on first spouse death? So it is a so it is a joint joint policy um, second to die policy structure of how it works. So upon the death of the first insured of the first insured, if you will, um, this the second insured retains the policy in its entirety uh, for their use up until their death. So at that point would be whether or not there would be death benefit paid back to their estate or to their beneficiaries, or if they had gone on claim where they were in the life of the policy. So it is a joint life second to die policy structure is how that works. Right. Yeah. Okay. And that looks like the only question we had for this part of it. Awesome. Awesome. Well, lot, lots of um, lots of good opportunity to talk about this. Like I said, um, there's something I was going to add right now. It came to my mind and then it went right out <laughs> when we were talking. I just, I just know that the yeah, I just know the opportunity they have to help clients right now, especially in California, with what's coming. Um, there, this is a great way to fund your long-term care with a hybrid like this. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And for anybody, again, that's on the line that sells in California, is in California, has colleagues that sell in California. Don and I were talking about this alert a little bit earlier. Some, several colleagues of mine and I are hosting a roundtable panel discussion webinar in, in just a little over a week, a week tomorrow, um, talking about what we know so far about California's Assembly Bill 567. So if you if you have any interest at all, please reach out to Don, um, and he can get you the information so that you can register for that webinar. It's I think it's super important to be talking about what potentially is coming, just so that the clients that you're working with have the opportunity to to make their own decision before decisions potentially get made for them. And certainly, a qualified opportunity is um, is 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 on the table to be able to satisfy the requirements from what we're seeing that California may or may not require and it's not just California you know what we have found is started with Washington moving to California and what we have found historically and one of the panelists will be talking about sort of the historical movement of things like this is sort of the snowball effect that happens with other states once it's things like this have been successfully or <laughs> that that might be um, subjective but successfully yeah. and you know, <laughs> proposed and imposed if you will in states so there is a there is a natural history of states adopting uh, similar type legislation when they see it done in other states so it's something to be aware of even if you're not in California or not selling in California just to see the landscape of what's company coming and there's certainly you know about 13 or 14, maybe even a few more now, other states that are talking about similar type legislation. So if you hadn't seen the information exactly. on that, yeah, on that panel discussion, reach out to Don and he can get that information for you. But yeah, our, our qualified solutions are, are fun to talk about. Um, it's, it's nice to see, you know, that clients have options out there. And this is just another one that's unique to One America that they can do. Yeah, you know, uh, Bridget, it's you know, with all the states, you know, with Washington doing this, and now that the, the stuff, it's already started, people are getting their money taken out of their paychecks, and we, we've got lots of calls about it. How do we get out of this? You know, and it's too late. Well, we want to make sure the agents know as best they can how we can help them in the, at each state as it comes. So, yeah, it's not just California. All There's a lot of other states that are actually looking at this and have stuff kind of in the works, but I tell you what, if you do it sooner than later, you're helping your clients. And you, by doing that, you're doing your job. That's the biggest thing. That's what we're here to do. So, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So there aren't any other questions. I really just wanted to, I didn't, you know, I don't want to belabor our time together. I really respect everybody's time joining us this morning. Just wanted to talk about what we had in the, in the arena of, qual of an option for our qualified solution. Yeah. No, it's been, you know, more than... Uh, more than good for everybody to listen to all this. I mean, the, the opportunities are there. Uh, the products are great. Plus, with that bonus too, you get if you're dumping in money. I mean, how can you not? How can you beat that? So, if you've got single ones you want to add in, uh, more than uh, give us a call here at AIM. Uh, I can get a hold of Bridget or another internal there uh, at One America, and we can help you work with the illustrations uh, to build the the uh, for your clients the best we can. Um, there's lots of opportunity. 
Um, but if you, once you get appointed, you have your contracting in. So that's a big thing too. We want to make sure we're in compliance. So make sure you're, when we're talking to you, when we give you a call after the webinar today and tomorrow, that if you don't have your contracts or you want to get appointed, let us know. We can get you the paperwork to do that and get you set up. Because there is also, uh, Bridget, that marketing center, or is it, I can't remember, it's, what do you call it? Because there's a lot of things they can use, yeah. like email advantages to that. Yeah, our One America Marketing Store. So if you're looking for opportunities to do any marketing camp campaigns within your own business, we can help set you up with our marketing store. We have co-branded material available. We have non-product agnostic, non 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 carrier, you know, um, pieces out there, so that it's not pushing One America or pushing One America solutions, but just having long-term care planning conversation and being able to utilize things like the qualified funds, you know, as an opportunity though. Yeah, so our One America marketing store, it's free for any of you guys to use. You just need to work with AIM so they can get you guys to me and we can get you set up. But yeah, lots of opportunity out there um, to help you in those marketing efforts. Yeah, there was only really, it looked like another one question had came in. It was, uh, does Survivor get both monthly payouts on claim? Is it just their benefit that they would get out on claim? It would just... I'm kind of figuring out how that it would be. be just yeah it would be just their monthly benefit so that monthly benefit is for each one of them individually even though it's a joint policy so if one of them were to die they still just get their monthly benefit amount right not it's okay. not it's not uh, time the, to yeah <laughs> yeah before we wrap up there's one thing the bonus is for every state except california correct correct for the dump in yeah, because I didn't see Correct. it on the, the California, but you know how you could see it on the, on the hypothetical for the na nation or national. So, okay. Yeah. Um, looks like yeah. that's all the questions we had. Unless you have anything else, Bridget, we're going to wrap it up. What do you think? Nope, I think we're good. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Bridget, for coming on today. Um, this is, you know, every, this is educational for everyone to know what's out there, what we can do. Uh, everyone that was on today, thank you very much for attending. We appreciate it as always. Uh, we will be reaching out to you later on today and tomorrow. Uh, thanks again. Don Erickson, you guys have a great day.